And with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker for today, who's Professor Mary Kelly Quinn. She's Associate Professor in the School of Biology and Environmental Science in UCD, and her research is focused on the impacts of human activities on their water quality and the ecology of freshwater, in particular in rivers. And in 2020, she co-edited a book on Ireland's rivers. Um, so to begin our high-level overview of water quality and biodiversity, please give a very warm Citizens' Assembly welcome to uh, Mary Kelly Quinn. So good morning everyone and thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation which I hope will set a context for the next two speakers. I'm going to start off by reminding us all of the importance of fresh waters. I'll have a look at what the 21st century brings to fresh waters, especially the biodiversity, give you a quick overview of Irish fresh water resources, a little glimpse at the biodiversity, and I'm going to focus then on the pressures on both water quality and associated biodiversity. So fresh water has been described as the lifeblood of human civilization flowing in the streams, the capillaries, and the rivers, the veins of the Earth's circulatory system. And just like our own circulatory system, we need to keep it healthy if it is to provide or if it is to function properly and provide all of the goods and services, so-called ecosystem services, that we depend on from fresh waters. So that's everything from the multiple uses of water to purification of water, regulation of temperature, right through to recreation, education, sense of place, biodiversity, uh, appreciation. I think an important message here is that fresh waters are living systems, they are ecosystems, and it is the biodiversity and their ecosystem processes that underpin or deliver all of those benefits which we depend on. And globally, fresh waters support one in 10 of all known species in less than 1% of the Earth's surface. At the same time, fresh waters are among the most threatened ecosystems on Earth, losing species faster than on land or at sea, because this is happening underwater, it is out of sight, out of mind, and it has been described as an invisible tragedy. In fact, the Living Planet report highlighted an 83% decline in freshwater biodiversity for the populations that they examined, and that has occurred since the 1970s. Now, Ireland abounds in freshwater resources. We have 184,000 kilometers of river channel, but 75% of that is small streams. These are headwater streams, less than about two meters in width. These are the most important, in my opinion, the most important part of the river network. Not only do they capture and drain land, but they are also extremely important for biodiversity. In fact, these areas have species that are found nowhere else in the river network. But at the same time, they're also the most vulnerable part of the river system because of the high land water content, contact and because of low dilution capacity. And therefore, they also influence water quality further downstream. We have 12,200 lakes covering 2% of the land area, which is twice the European average. Uh, most of these are actually small lakes, less than a hectare in area, and these small lakes together with ponds make a really significant contribution to regional biodiversity. Now, there are other aquatic habitats, which we call wetlands, and these include the bogs, marshes, swamps, springs, and seepages. And these are known as the kidneys of the landscape because they make an extremely important contribution to water purification and water, uh, water retention. But in the context of climate change, they're also important for carbon sequestration. Globally, and I suppose Ireland is no exception, wetlands are disappearing 
at rates that are three times faster than, say, forests. Riparian or bankside vegetation has a huge influence on the ecological health of rivers and, and lakes. Uh, first of all, uh, bankside vegetation provides leaf litter that fuels the aquatic food webs. It also provides insects which form parts of the diet of fish, in particular salmon and trout. But equally, fresh waters make a contribution to riparian zones in the form of adult insects as they emerge from water and they form the, an important component of the diet of uh, bats, birds, and spiders, essential links between the two stream, uh, the two systems. Riparian vegetation, of course, can also attenuate diffuse pollution, and you're going to hear more about that in the next two presentations. Suffice it to say is that degraded or no right natural riparian buffer vegetation in many catchments in Ireland is leaving surface waters as open receptors for diffuse pollution. So let's have a quick glimpse at what I'm talking about when I mentioned uh, biodiversity. And there's biodiversity, aquatic biodiversity above and below water. Above water you have those species which feed on the organisms living in surface waters, the kingfisher, the otter, and a really amazing variety of insects such as dragonflies and damselflies. Underwater you have the fish of course and you'll hear more about those from Ken Whelan uh, this afternoon. There is an amazing variety of plant life and in particular biofilm life uh, phytobenthus, and that's the food source of grazing species. But one of the most important groups are what we call the macroinvertebrates. These are organisms without a backbone, and they range from everything from mites to mayflies, from the beautiful to the absolutely amazing. And really, these are not just the bugs in water. These have a, a functional role, so they perform many essential functions in fresh water from the processing of leaf litter and detritus. So in fact, about 80% of all the leaves that fall into, into uh, rivers are consumed by these organisms. And then they're also food for fish and other invertebrates. And these processes help to maintain clean water. Most of these are actually insect larvae, so they spend 99% of their life as juveniles in water, and they emerge as adults at some period during the year. And I suppose the most important group, in my own opinion, are the mayflies, the stoneflies, and the caddisflies, because these are the indicators of good water quality. But there's also midge larvae, beetle larvae, and a whole range of very weird-looking fly larvae as well. A very special invertebrate is the pearl mussel. This is a protected species living for up to 120 years in Ireland. It depends on the highest water and habitat quality. Of the 67 populations of pearl mussel in Ireland, 66 are on the path to extinction due to human activities. So land drainage, nutrients, sediment input, and other pollutant inputs <coughs> are threatening this species with extinction. The macroinvertebrates that I've just mentioned can be considered to be the canary in the river and we can use them as indicators of water quality and they give a good idea of the prevailing water quality. So you can see on the right hand side of the slide here what happens when you have bad water quality. You lose a whole variety of species, in particular the mayflies, the stoneflies and the caddisflies. Now, the Water Framework Directive, some of you might have heard about it. This is the key directive um, concerned with uh, water management across Europe. 
The goal is good status for all waters, and the new target date is 2027. And you'll hear the term status, which is really about water quality. So we want to achieve at least good water quality, and that is determined um, on the basis of ecological health, water chemistry, and the condition of the physical habitat, which we call hydromorphology. Ecological health, then, is determined by what lives in the water. So uh, the assessment is based on the invertebrates that I've just mentioned, the fish, and also aquatic vegetation. So just bear in mind the goal is good status. And it was a bit shocking to read in the recent EPA report that the evidence in that report shows that we won't meet the target of good status for all waters by 2027. So how are Ireland's rivers and lakes faring in terms of their ecological quality? Well, almost 50% of Irish fresh waters are in unsatisfactory condition. They're not making, meeting the WFD goals, and it also represents loss of biodiversity from those sites. Have a look at the map, and you can see all of the yellow on that map and very little blue. So a lot of moderate pollution. In effect, water quality is continuing to decline. It's going in the wrong direction. That has implications for biodiversity, as well as what we derive and depend on from water. So what is the, the problem? Well, first of all, we have runoff of nutrients and excess sediment from and pesticides from agricultural land and farmyards. Activities such as drainage is impacting the the physical habitat, poorly treated sewage, and runoff of nutrients and excess sediment from forestry operations. In effect, Ireland's fresh waters are receiving a cocktail of multiple pollutants or stressors derived from along varying pathways from multiple sources, challenging the efforts to address those problems and requiring the targeting of the right measures in the right place. And you'll hear a lot more about that in the next presentation. There are significant pressures from agriculture, followed by habitat damage, hydromorphology, forestry, and urban wastewater. Now, it's difficult and challenging to address diffuse pollution from agriculture, and it certainly does require looking at the right measures in the right places. So Donald will talk to you about that. Um, I think it's much easier, at least the solution to the wastewater problem is more obvious. I think it, in, in the 21st century, in a developed country, it is totally unacceptable to have partially or indeed raw sewage discharged into too many rivers in this country. This is the shocking result of widespread water pollution. There has been a dramatic decline in the number of our pristine river sites, from over 500 in the 1980s to 32 today. And a few years ago, that actually had dropped down to 24. This represents a loss of biodiversity, a loss of our natural heritage, and also a loss of a pool of species that will be required to restore the ecological health of systems that are recovering from pollution where the pollution pressure has been removed. We really don't have a handle on what species we're losing in this country. Conservation assessment or red listing has been carried out for a number of groups and they're listed there. I'm not going to go through them in detail, but between 20 and 30% of assessed biodiversity is vulnerable or at worse conservation status. Now, if you look at the dates on those, there is only one recent assessment. All of the other assessments are 10 years or older. And I know from my own experience sampling across the country that the situation is certainly a lot worse. 
particularly in areas with intensive agriculture. Not only is, for example, macroinvertebrate diversity lower in areas or in regions with um, intensive agriculture, but the variety of species that one would expect is also significantly reduced. So, a few points to conclude. I think deteriorating water quality needs to be taken more seriously at policy level. We are at a tipping point. And if we go beyond this, it will be practically impossible to reverse the decline in water quality and biodiversity loss. So today, I really want to emphasize that urgency and if you don't feel that urgency, then I have failed to convey the urgency to you. Because climate change is also likely to exacerbate the challenges to protect water quality and biodiversity. Biodiversity loss, water quality loss, climate change are just sides of the same coin. They're all happening together. The consequences for biodiversity loss needs to be translated to the effects on ourselves. Water quality decline and loss of biodiversity impact us. They impact the goods and services, the benefits, the essential benefits that we derive from surface waters. And we need to make that link. That link is not effectively made in policy at present. Really, there is lots of good work going on across the country, but it is not at a scale that is good enough to, to halt the decline in water quality and biodiversity. So in my opinion, we need an emergency recovery plan with co coordinated actions to what is said to be bend the curve of declining water quality and biodiversity. And I'm going to leave you then with one quote from the Living Planet Report, which really puts the responsibility back on all of us to address these problems. Thank you very much for your attention.